get straight into it. The elephant in the room here in Origin Camp is Regan Campbell-Gillard. Starter in Game 1, Origin outcast. What's happened? Well, look, he's missed out on selection. We've seen Jordan McLean go down. We've seen Saifidi come into the side. We've also seen uh, Dale Finucane come into the side. So he's right down the pecking order. And people are asking questions why. Uh, some former greats of the game have said perhaps uh, there is some sort of set against him from within the team. I put that to Brad Fittler uh, directly and he hadn't heard that suggestion. Uh, he hadn't heard any ill talk of Regan, Regan Campbell-Gillard. And he said it's to do with the way he plays a game, the style of football that he's been playing, doesn't quite suit what he wants. And we have to believe what Brad Fittler has to say. I know it mightn't wash with everybody, might not sit comfortably with everybody, uh, particularly those who want Campbell Gillard in the side, but that's the explanation, and um, he goes into depth on it on Nine News tonight as well, Michael. Dave, so I, think... I just think um, Regan wasn't a sure thing to be named in that first squad, and granted, he was a starting front row, but the basis of his being a starting front row is because Daniel Saifidi wasn't available, and Daniel would have been in the team. And so Regan, had, he wasn't a good thing to be named in that. There was still plenty of debate on whether he was going to be named in that team. He ran for just over 90 metres in that game. They lost the, lost the opening game of the series. They needed to make changes. Now, the, the decision to bring Jacob in was based on that he's been part of these camps before. He joined camp on Friday afternoon, and it's a late start to get going as far as prep is concerned. So they went with the easiest option, and that is Saifidi, as I said, who knows the systems because he's been part of the camp. I just wonder how much that 2020 series had an effect as well. Because remember, Reading Campbell, I was part of that squad for New South Wales in 2020. Obviously, had all the COVID restrictions, the bubbles, and he left the New South Wales squad before the series decided a couple of days. And I can completely understand, given all the restrictions the players are on, but I wonder if that's still in the back of Brad Fittler's mind. I suppose he chose him for game one this year, but I don't think something like that Freddie would forget pretty quickly. Let's move to Queensland origin camp. Cameron Munster, Murray to Atalangi, they've both been ruled out with COVID. It, it brings the question to the final series. Are we going to be in a situation where players are dropping like flies for big games, or can you see clubs starting to hide these COVID results for big games like a grand final or a prelim? I've got no doubt. I've got no doubt that clubs will start to... Uh, make decisions that suit the best interests of the club. It's a big call, that massive call. Yeah, I know. I don't know whether you can cheat the system like that. I mean, I, I, well, I, surely the there are going to be independent people mm. observing. Well, currently it's internal. That's right. So, yeah. Danny, it's on. It's on the clubs. And uh, you're telling me at a semi-final period, yeah. so much to play for. Uh, I think. I think what we've seen here with the Queensland camp and Cameron Munster pulling out that. that Clubs don't want to be in that position of losing a premiership on the back of but, but Dave, the spicy you're, cough. You're saying then that you're risking your player's health because there have been talk about how, how COVID does affect a player, how it has a lingering effect afterwards. Yep. Do you think clubs would seriously risk a player's health? Well, you heard Billy Slater talk about Cameron Munster. Not a symptom. Mm. Feels absolutely fine. Mm. Why wouldn't the NRL send in those independent COVID cops again and say, OK, the eight teams are in the final series. We're going to have someone in, inside your camp doing the daily testing every day. And if someone tests positive, that's it. You're well, out. Then you're and inviting they... the big game, big, big game players to miss out on big games. If the NRL don't send in anyone, well, as Dave said, then, but then you're how are you going to know? You might be risking their health. Well, you might be, yeah. That's, that's, that's an issue. But then I think you'll find clubs come finals period will enter a bubble. Is that what yep. you're hearing as well, that these teams that go deep into the competition will isolate themselves for a two, three-week period? I think you're right, Michael. The bigger issue is how they're going to try and the club's going to do these protocols themselves. Do they take a team out of Sydney and set up camp somewhere remotely and say, OK, I'm sorry, families, but it's really important we're trying to win a competition and you take everyone out of that uh, environment? Not again. <laughs> and, uh, well, it could be, Danny. Pack, it could your, be. pack your speedos, Danny. You're going on another trip, mate. <laughs> not again. Let's move to Brandon Smith. Thursday night, uh, he called the ref a cheat and he faces the judiciary on Tuesday night. What do we expect to come of it? Well, they're saying, what, four weeks? Um, yep. I think it might... I'd be happy with one or two. Really? Yeah, I'd be happy with one or two. Surely he deserves more, he, Danny, he, than that, than one the or biggest, two weeks. It's one of the biggest slurs you can yeah. call a referee. It is the biggest slur you can call yeah. a referee. I, my bigger concern is that we're seeing Brandon Smith um, in the news a lot yep. for reasons other than football. Let, let's put this to one side. We've seen him off the field making you know, headlines. Mm. Now he's showing ill discipline on the field. That... I want to look at it in a broader way. I think I'm a bit concerned about that. He's a great character of the game. Everybody loves him. But I am a little bit concerned that we're seeing uh, neg negativity coming out of Brandon Smith now on the field as well as off the field. And he's got to perform on the field. Yeah, yeah I wonder what Trent Robinson and Nick Polise are thinking right now, aren't they? He's going to be a big name signing heading to Bondi next year. Just back on how many weeks he'll get. I think yeah. the grade three contrary conduct charge for a first offence is three weeks, two weeks with another guilty plea. Yeah. If you get referred straight to the judiciary, I'm tipping he's going to get more than three weeks yeah, on, on Tuesday yeah. night. So um, very interesting to see how it plays it's important, out. It's important the game stands up for the match officialdom. 
really, it is the inte- he's questioning the integrity of that match official on Thursday night, and I believe four weeks is, is justifiable for sure. I thought Adam G handled it pretty well as well. I thought he, he, was, he handled it really well on Thursday night. Well, let's head to Tiger Town. A lot of talk about you love West Tiger Tigers. Town. Yeah, I know you <laughs> yeah. love, I love Tiger Town. How come you're not there now? I should be sitting <laughs> in your seat here. Now, I, I just want to ask about when Michael Maguire was sacked, the Tigers said part of the reason was because they didn't see him being the coach in three years' time. Now we're talking potentially Tim Sheens. A lot of former greats pushing Tim Sheens to take over the West Tigers. What do you make of that? Oh, look, Tim Sheens has done everything in the game and I don't think anyone could bag him at all or, or mock his credentials. He probably could do the job. Um, I just find it really weird that the decisions that come out of that club, and I, I still believe there have got to be changes that are made at the very top of the Tigers. Yes, the coaching situation's big, but I think that I think that the officials there have really uh, questions to answer, and I'm I feel for the players who are angry at the clubs for the, who are leaking things and doing all this. I, I feel for those players, and I also think that. The coach, you need a strong coach there, and maybe Tim Sheens can handle it. But I don't think things have improved greatly since Tim Sheens has been there either. I, I don't think the, the decision about uh, appointing Tim Sheens is based on long term, Mick. I, I think it's a, it's a case of they know that there's this rich crop of nursery of talent coming through, mm. but they're not ready to debut until two to three years' time. So they can drop Tim in with an understudy and work on the next two to three years. I don't think it's, I know what you're saying about Madge. But the, the Sheen's fix, in my mind, wouldn't be for, for longer than the next two to three years. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? And, you, and we've spoken before about Cameron Sorolla. That would have been in the back of his mind, wouldn't it? The fact that these young crop of kids that they've got coming through weren't going to be ready for the next two or three years yeah. anyway. Yeah. Well, this is a by They're in this situation because, obviously, the Sorolla. They went so hard. Five years. How un- embarrassing. Unheard of. Well, what, what did you expect them to do, Danny? Like, they went after the coach that they considered the right man for the job, and they went really hard. What are they not supposed to go for? Well, him? I don't think they needed to come out and say, he's the bloke we need. Like, the only bloke. He's well, the they did, and originally, choice. we, in the media, found out that they were meeting so with it's him. it's our fault. Well, it's our fault. But I'm saying, your what fault. are they supposed to do as a club? Not go after the guy that is considered the best Go the after him, but don't declare him as your number one choice, because now, where are they left? Whoever they choose now is number two. But that... It's That's number two. It's a bad look. But if they, they showed Cameron Seraldo, they rolled out the red carpet, didn't they, Adam? They went and said, you know what, you're our guy. We mm. believe that you can develop these young proper kids and turn them into first graders. Well, I'm intrigued if Tim Sheens takes the job. Mm. Have they identified his successor straight away? Does it, his, his successor come in and work underneath him straight away? Or is it just this like holding period for two years and we'll say, oh, we'll see what the market's like in another two years and then bring someone in? So I think someone who's going to take the club forward in the long term needs to work under Tim Sheens rock right now. Johnny Morris? Yeah. Does John Morris come across and be his assistant for the next two well, years and then Brett, take over? Brett Kamal is currently there. And the, I know the results aren't there, but the in, well, in, poor results. internally they're, they're content with the way that Noddy's taking the direction of that club with some key selections of debutants. Mm. So it might, so, already, it might may already be underway. Dave, I'd, like, I'd rather see them invest in a, a Benji sure. or, a, or a Robbie, um, yep. blokes who have... Well, you saw Robbie or, sitting or, in the or, coaching or, yeah, last night. absolutely. Or someone with a rich history, even even mm. Johnny Morris. I mean, he's proven yep. he, can, he can bring sides from a, a poor position and, and yep. can take them up. And he gets on World Team Well, let's, let's head to, to Brisbane now, Red Hill. Been a busy week. Reese Walsh has signed with the club. What does his signing mean for Payne Haas' future? Oh, I think it's significant. I, I honestly believe we're watching the final days of Payne Haas in a Broncos wow. jersey. Okay. I just think that salary cap-wise, to keep that squad together, something's got to give. When we know that Payne wants big money, mm. right? And he, he deserves it. Uh, and with Reese Walsh coming to the club, that's been a position of, of problem for the Broncos, fullback. They've fixed that issue, but he comes at a price, Reese Walsh, and I think Payne Haas will ultimately be squeezed out. Well, I don't think he'll struggle to get the club. No, no, no. <laughs> you'll do okay. Look, and just whether he gets the club for the for the money he's after, and whether do you agree or not? I think I think it'll have implications. Yeah, I think it has massive implications. Mm. So, but I don't know their cap intimately. Just put Payne Haas to one side for a moment, boys. What happens to Selwyn Cobbo, who's come out during the week saying he wants to play fullback long term? What happens to Herbie Farnworth? He's got designs on playing in, in mm. the number one. Uh, they've got these great crop of young kids in the outside backs. Katoni Stark has yeah. wanted to play 5'8 in the past. Ezra Mam's going great guns at 5'8. I think putting Payne Haas to one side for a minute, they've got a big issue trying to sort out yeah. how they're going to do all those young kids in the back line. And that, yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Well, it's a problem for Kevin Walters. Danny, we'll let you head back in there, get those speedos back on. Adam, thanks for joining us. David, <laughs> well done as always. More from the footy show after the break.